Part 3 Now I'd like you to take a look at this inspiring TED Talk given by composer Eric Whiteacre. Eric has used online audience engagement as part of his practice as a composer and conductor. I assure you, you're going to be really inspired. You can find his talk at TED.com and look for 2,000 voices. Two great examples of online platforms where you can showcase and sell your work is 20 by 200 and Etsy.com. Both of these websites focus on individual craft makers and artists and provide them with a place where they can exhibit and sell their work online. 20 by 200's tagline is art for everyone and like Etsy there is an amazing amount of work to choose from. OK, we'll have a look at blogs now and why blogs are important. Blogs are really important because it's necessary to own your own audience. Things change, other sites change, they become defunct, they change the rules. For example, Facebook posts do not show up on search, Google search or any other. So I won't see your latest post if I search for you on Google. If I search for an artist in Belfast and you're just on Facebook, then you're out of luck. If other sites change the rules or charge per post, what will happen to your profile and to your work? In search results, it's a really good idea to be listed 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 all the way down to the end of the page. So for example, you come up first on your blog, your LinkedIn profile comes up next, Twitter is number 3 and your work on Vimeo or YouTube comes up fourth. In this way, nobody else is shown on that first page result, just you. Now everybody else has moved down to page 2. Blogs are great for this and blogs are a fantastic way to own your own audience. It's a place you can direct your users back to, from Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. Blogs are a great place to gather email addresses, so going back to the customer journey it's a way to stay in contact over a long period of time with your users. Make sure you give your audience a way to connect with you online, and make sure to include an RSS feed. Blog about you, your practice, the things you find interesting, and as I said before, it's all about finding your own voice coming from your perspective. Moving on to Twitter now, my top tips for Twitter are follow people who you admire and who influence you. Create lists of people to follow under different categories, for example in this case galleries, artists, writers and curators. It's easier then to monitor the conversations and to keep in touch with what's happening. Again, remember it's a conversation. Be courteous and friendly, and by all means, share images, articles, and things you found useful online. Going back to the customer journey, think of how you can add benefit to the people who follow you. Network, and actively seek out the influencers in your field. Get to know them as people. It's like the investor who meets a young startup entrepreneur for the first time and within two minutes of their meeting the entrepreneur asks for investment. Will the investor invest? I think not. Rules of etiquette and good manners are just as important on Twitter and Facebook as they are in the real world. Start slowly if you're new to Twitter. Post about things you're comfortable with. It's not all about what you had for lunch today. However, in saying that, Twitter is lots of fun, so a bit of whimsy and humour once in a while is good too. I have found LinkedIn to be one of the most helpful tools in terms of building my business and connecting with people. LinkedIn works on the principle of connecting individuals who know each other. This does not mean that you have to meet all your LinkedIn connections face to face, as LinkedIn provides a valuable tool where connections can introduce their friends to their contacts. It's all done on the basis of trust. My recommendation to connect Peter with my friend Paul, because they have similar interests, is very powerful. Connections that are made in this way are very strong. Once again, human psychology kicks in. We trust the opinions of our friends. LinkedIn mimics the real world in terms of the introductions and the connections that we make. So if you haven't tried it out before, I strongly suggest you put up your profile and get connecting. Make sure to join industry groups in your niche and comment and interact as much as you can with them. LinkedIn groups are a great way to build your network and to learn more about what's going on out there. 
Why not start a group of your own or gather a community around you? Recommendations are another great way to get yourself noticed on LinkedIn. Ask for recommendations from previous employers and make sure to add them to your profile. Recommendations gives a great sense about the person you are, where you're coming from and what you do from another source. It also backs up what you wrote about yourself on your profile. Another great way to think about LinkedIn is it's a huge market for artists and artwork. Search who got funding recently, who opened a new office. Maybe these entrepreneurs might well want a commission for something for their office. If you approach them, maybe they will get in touch. Think about it as a massive audience who are desperately in need of creativity in their lives. You can connect to as many people as you want. And you never know, maybe the next piece of artwork hanging in a cool office in the valley in San Francisco could be yours. Most people here today have Facebook accounts. I want to give you a great example of an Irish company who've managed to grow their audience and their market share using Facebook as their predominant marketing tool. The name of the company is Harry Baby. They've assembled together a band of very enthusiastic followers on Facebook, over 18,000 at this point, by their sheer good humour and witty interactions online. New t-shirt designs are voted off and suggestions are taken from the fans. For a small company, Facebook was a great marketing tool to use as it was very cost effective and has the potential for a worldwide market. Have a look at Harry Baby's page on Facebook and see if their strategy might inform yours. There are lots of email services out there to use. Spoiled Child have created Toggle.com. There's also MailChimp, Campaign Monitor and many, many others. Email works by building regular personal contact with your users. My top tips for email. Keep your newsletter short and sweet. Make sure to target your information appropriate to the audience. Build a trust relationship. If I love your work and I'm interested in what you do, I'll always open your newsletter. Always have a call to action. What do you want the reader to do next? Remember the customer journey here. Gather emails everywhere to build your list. Always ask permission and don't send unsolicited emails. Send regularly. It's all about owning your audience, continuing the conversation. Monitor, measure and improve. Email is important because it's the glue that brings all the marketing loop together. As Alan in our office says, social is shiny, email is money. Now that we've had a look at the most popular social networks and online platforms available to us, let's have a look to see how we can make all of this easier. One of the best ways to automate your posts and to monitor who's talking about you is TweetDeck. TweetDeck allows you to set up your account and input your Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn feeds. You can then decide where you want to post your new image, article or something you found online. TweetDeck is invaluable as it saves you time and you can search for phrases or keywords in your niche. You can also keep track of conversations, who has mentioned you or retweeted you. You can also keep lists of people to follow and people who follow you. I suggest you check out TweetDeck, particularly if you have a few accounts and if you are the person who looks after social media for your organisation or voluntary group. Just to let you know, Recent research indicates that a share on Facebook is worth $2.52 and growing. So there is certainly value to be gained from sharing your events online on social media. If you want to read the full report, go over to www.eventbrite.com. So the next steps. Set up a blog or a website, set up your Twitter account and set up a Facebook account. And make sure you create a LinkedIn profile. Rinse and repeat regularly. I'd like to thank you all for coming here again today and I've really enjoyed today's session and best of luck growing your profile and promoting yourself online. Thank you.